Hello and welcome to Herman Hits the Road and in this video we're going to be replacing the front brakes. Herman Hits the Road. Now what do I mean by the front brakes? So last time we uh, took a look at the, the brakes we uh, replaced the pads, the front pads uh, but we had a problem with putting the pads back in with the calipers. The calipers, the pistons wouldn't go back into the into the caliper itself so they're a bit seized. We managed to get them in eventually but we've decided to replace the front calipers. That's our main job today. We've already done the pads but we'll show you how to do that as well. Safety first, we've got a three ton jack and We've got uh, two three-ton axle stands, and right at the back there, we've chucked the rear wheels. We have here the near side front wheel, and uh, this is the disc brake. Let's just go around and show you the bits of the braking system. So this is the disc brakes. So this spins when you're driving. Uh, here we have the caliper. This is what we want to take off and replace. Uh, inside here, this is actually gripping uh, two brake pads. There's one here, and there's one on the other side inside there. Uh, this wire here, see this little white wire, uh, that is the brake sensor. You may not have that, we have. And uh, one thing you might want to check is the brake lines. So there's these two rubber brake hoses coming into the caliper here. Some vehicles only have one. And you want to check these to make sure that there's, they're not uh, in, over inflating or blistering or anything. Uh, and if they, do, if they are, then you want to replace them. Are you going to do anything on the hydraulics of the, uh, 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 brake, of the braking system? You've got brake, brake fluid in, in the system. So what we're going to do is we're going to be pushing the caliper pistons in, which will back pressure the um, brake fluid. So it's always a good idea to lift upon it up, find your reservoir where your brake fluid goes, loosen the cap. Yep. Leave it to the side like that so don't lose it. Put a bit of rag around there. And if you can, get something underneath, just in case as you're pushing the pistons in, the fluid rises and comes over the top. And the reason you do this is inside the master cylinder here, there are seals. And if you're, you've got seized calipers and you're trying to get things in there and push the pistons back, you create the back pressure, you can blow these seals. And a good indication that sometimes when the, when the, the, the master is gone, you'll get a, a line of brake fluid down there and you'll see the paint coming off of the, um, the servo before you'll get a damp. Um, you'll, get, you'll get paint flakes on the inside on the pedal where it runs down the connecting lever onto the pedal. Um, but by taking that off there, you've got half a chance of relieving the pressure and the brake fluid rise as you back pressure it. It's just a safety thing really, so if you're doing any more damage. Yeah. But always have a receptacle and always have a rag because you know, effectively, brake fluid can act as a paint stripper. Yeah. So any, any rags or anything you use to do with brake fluid that get contaminated by it, you put them into one bag, you tie it up, you put your gloves, you make sure you, everything's clean the brake fluid and you throw it away responsibly. Yeah, get rid of it responsibly. That's a sensor that um, gives you the, uh, lets you know, the pad indicator, pad wear indicator. Right, okay. yeah. So when the, when the pads run down, there's, there's a, a little sensor on the end of that that touches the disc and then flicks the light on the dashboard to let you know your pads are worn down. So looking at the back of the caliper, you can see that there is these uh, two bolts. There's one there and there's one here. Uh, now these are 13s, um, but to take them off, you need to hold the bolt in the middle here. And to, use that, to do that, you need a 17mm uh, spanner. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the caliper. So you've got dual brake hoses on here. So we're going to take them both off now. One is shorter than the other. So you can't really get them around the wrong way and they're bracketed around the right way as well. But if you're not sure, mark them up. Mark them up where they go to the yeah. new caliper. So I'm just going to put a bit of spray on them just to get them nice and loose. Now, when you undo these, you're going to get an element of twist in them. Okay, they are going to twist a bit, but there's not there's not a lot really you can do about that, you know, unless you undo them at this end, which you don't need to do. 
they're quite they, they, they're quite durable they're quite you know what we're going to do is we're going to undo these brake hoses but we're going to leave the caliper in place because what you don't want to do is take the caliper off and have it hanging and then try and undo these uh, hoses okay. off of it yes while it's locked into place it's easier to get yes. your purchase yeah, and yeah. undo them yeah so undo them and then remove the caliper that's right yeah yeah, yeah. okay Okay. Otherwise, it'd be dangling down here, won't it? It'd be dangling down here. Yeah. So you're not taking them off straight away. You just loosen them off, and loosen then off. and then you're just wheeling them backwards and forwards just to yeah. free that. And the reason I'm doing that is because when you take these out of here, gravity isn't on your side, so you're going to get the fluid. Right, Leaking and out. you want to do it quickly. Yeah, the most people have the new caliper ready just to go bang and put it on again. So you've got about, say, 10 seconds really. Yeah. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to take the calipers off and then we're going to put a plastic bag over them, tape it up so it catches the fluid. Yeah? Okay, all right. So what handy tool are you using so now? This is a, a, a brake pipe mount. So we clamp the brake pipe. And lock it off like that. It's not a pair of pliers then, it looks like a no, pair of pliers. pliers. It's a clamp. And it will clamp the brake pipe like so. And it should stop a majority of the fluid coming out. Yeah. You're not going to stop everything. No, but... you're not, no. Yeah, we should be able to stop enough of the fluid to make a bit of a difference to it all pouring out everywhere, you know. But try and use. No, fairly good quality clamps. You don't want anything that's going to damage the pipe. See, this sharp, you know. Some people use mole grips and things. Of course, you're just going to damage yeah, the, the hose. Yeah. Use a designated tool for it, yeah, really, you know. Yeah. So, on here, there's a little retaining clip bracket to hold the hose in place. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't move around too much and rub, you know. Yeah. Um, but they're a tiny little tiny little nut it's like, like a seven or eight mil nut and they've been on there 20 years so i won't be a bit surprised we soak them if they snap when we try and undo oh, them okay because if it's they plastic do, right yeah if well no they're not plastic they're, oh, they're metal not. but trying to replace them will be you know so what we have to, if they do snap we're gonna have to drill through the brackets oh goodness and put our own nut and bolts on but let's see what happens anyway let's have a go oh it's only undone all that drama all that drama and it undoes There we go. So due to the twisting of the uh, the hose, you've taken the clamp off for the moment. And I'm here about to capture some brake fluid. getting a bit twisty now isn't it yeah. yeah we're not able to take the end of this pipe off out of the caliper uh, due to all the twisting that's happening so we're going to take it off at the top here the other end where, before it goes into the brake pipe so we take the pipe off entirely and and uh, loosen it off and then maybe have to take it out of the, uh, the caliper usually you can turn a hose out of the caliper, loosen it off and turn it out of there. Um, for some reason, these are just these threads on these are quite long, which is okay. It's, no, it's not a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to attack it from the pipes at the back here, yeah, and take that, the dual hoses off the pipes at the back. We've soaked them up. Um, again, the right size spanner. You know, try and get a brake pipe spanner for them because you're going into the brake pipes. So look again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, because you're gripping it there on five sides of the nut, you're gripping the, the yeah. brake pipe on five sides. So, is, there. is that actually a brake? Is it called a brake pipe spanner then? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I thought it was just. Spanners, or, yeah, or pipe, you know, pipe spanners, pipe union spanners. Right, okay. You know, um, these are quite nice little ones because you can get them in your hand and get into where you're going. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, hey, once again, don't forget, these pipes can corrode in there. So, when you're undoing those unions to the brake hose, Nice and gently, and watch if the pipe is twisting as well. Because you know, if you if you damage the pipe, then you're into 
put in brake lines, you know, yeah. see where they go. Yeah, you don't want to, yeah, you don't want to. Forming new brake lines and flaring ends and all sorts of stuff, yeah. you know. So we've given it a bit of a soak, we've left it 10 minutes, and what we'll do now is we'll see if we can crack and run done. I mean, there's no need for our clamps now because you can't clamp a metal pipe. No. <laughs> so gravity is going to take its course now and they're going to leak out of there. But we'll catch the fluid and we'll put a bag over it to stop any dust going back up. Do you want to put blue tack down the end then? Well, no, not really. I was thinking, <laughs> or maybe a bit of, you know. Cork? Yeah, or sand and cement. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do any of that. <laughs> Just gently ease it towards you. Nice and gentle. And back a bit. And then towards you. There it goes, it's gone. Pull it gently towards you. And and that one's gone yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, I okay? saw that. Yeah. And that one's gone as well. So there you go. They're both undone. Right, so we've managed to crack those unions at the back there where the, the metal brake pipes go into the hose. Yeah. Now the hoses are held on by a like a horseshoe clip. Yeah. yeah? But obviously that's a very thin metal and it's been in there 21 years. So I've soaked it and then we'll try and ease them out with um the pliers. Right. And that, that actually there's actually a, a, a cutout in the end of the hose that slides into and locks it into the clamp that's on the bodywork so that it can't, you know, move. Right. Because when you put your foot in the brake, you get the hose does move. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, so it's just because it's a hydraulic right, pressure moves it. Yeah. Very slightly, but yeah. That's why if you ever notice, if you're ever in for an MOT and the MOT test is testing it, he'll have his assistant in the vehicle and he'll grab the brake pipe hose and say, pump the brake, and he's feeding what's going on through that hose. Oh, I've never so seen that. Yeah. yeah. Let's try and get these clips out, shall we? And the trick to these, again, is pair of pliers and just be really gentle with them. So just, you know, don't just turn them gently. One. And they're not bad condition actually. I mean, if we can get some more, we will. If not, we'll clean them up, you know, and we'll go again with them. But they're not, there's no, the rough is up, those, no, it? the rough is only surface. But if, when we get the calipers, if there's a set in there, which I doubt, if not, we'll just clean them up and yeah. go again with those. That's it. That's what we've back to the now, you see? Yeah. That's it. So if we take these brake lines out now, those hoses should come out of there and we should be able to take the caliper off. So now I've loosened off the, um, brake pipes with the right spanner I know they're loose they're almost finger tight I can use a standard open edged right okay leather that spanner on there just to pull them around like that that's it that's turning quite nicely on the pipe which is always a concern that's one hose Two hoses now. Let him sit up there for now. So, Chaz, tell me, why the hell have you just found this grubby bit of hose? Um, for one, I could have done that. It's yeah, you can do that. For one, it's um, it's a it's a it's a fuel grade hose, so it must be. Doesn't have to be, you know, you won't be on it long, but it actually can take fuel grade this hose. And what we'll do is, it's, I mean, you know, it means the brake fluid's not going to affect its construction. You know, right, it's okay, yeah. Or anything like that. And what we'll try and do is try and pull the brake pipe up like so. Yeah, look at that, it's pissing it. And push that over there like that. And then over there. Like that, and join it together. So, like that, push it onto the nut. Yeah, yeah, onto the nut there, and that stems the the flow, or slows down quite a bit the flow of brake fluid. Because the brake fluid is leaking quite a lot, and of course we knew we were going to get this. We figured that if we had a bit of that rubber hose around the two ends, the two pipes, 
and we could uh, slow the flow down. Yeah, so we're going to put a cable tie around the two ends of the rubber hose. See if we can slow it down even more. Now, of course, if we had the caliper, we would have just whipped them exactly, off and then yeah. put them back on. But we need to go and get the calipers. We're going to match it up. Okay. Oh, I see. Right, got you. While we're in this bag, if we have a look at that, that's in really good condition actually. How about the ends? Yeah, that's all really good. It's all good, yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, all around the, oh, they're, they're linked around where they're, they're crimped. Uh, it's all really good, no splits, no no bulges. That's good, mm. that's good. They're yeah, all good, you can see where your someone in the past, not yeah. us, the past has broken your sensor. But then we can always get a new one of those and rejoin it. That's not a problem. And I've even cable tied it on for a good measure, bless him. <laughs> but he's a good one, he's okay. Yeah, so the hoses are in good nick. Right, so a bit of bad news. We've just gone to the shop uh, with the this caliper and uh, brought back a new one, uh, well, it's a refurbished one. And uh, we found that it wouldn't actually fit properly with the brake shoes on there, uh, sorry, brake pads. Uh, it couldn't get the caliper back on. Measuring it with a micrometer, we found that the ones that they thought were the, were the, the right, right ones are actually slightly, prior, just a few millimetres too small. They look exactly the same. So apparently there are about three different types for this chassis. And uh, two very common ones and the one that we need. <laughs> so we've ordered that part, but that's not gonna be arriving until the next few days. Uh, so we're gonna just cover up what we've done and uh, sort it out when we get the new parts. It's the new weekend and we've uh, managed to get our new caliper and we just wanted to make sure that it is exactly the same as the, the, other, uh, the, the old one uh, before we replace it. So we have the old caliper and the new caliper and notice that they have, both of them have two pistons here. This, these actually push against the, uh, the brake pads and uh, Chaz here has a micrometer. Micrometer, yeah. Gauge, micrometer. A way of measuring yeah. now, small spaces. Yeah, now with these calipers, on, on these, on, especially on the Fits and the Mercedes, they have um, the Lucas ones. And they have about three or four different types. Now the easy mistake to make is with these is that the distance between here and here okay, can vary, but only up to about six mil. So if you can imagine, they usually have 24, 18 stamped on the, the, under, the, the underside of the actual yes. caliper itself. Yeah, you it's see? 24. But when they get a bit, if, if people who aren't in a none, they don't notice that, you can make a, a huge mistake, which is, so always measure them up first. Yeah, measure them in a couple of places. Make sure that span there is equal to the one you got on your caliper. Yeah? And the reason you do that is, if you can imagine you've got this caliper on and you've got your pads that sit in here and these pistons when you apply the brake they came out they come out and they put pressure on the disc to help stop you and they wear down so your pads are wearing down wearing down wearing down and your pads wear down say 10 mil you go and buy a new caliper that is six mil smaller than the old one and it will fit and you'll bolt it on and it will work and then when your pads wear right down and you want to change them, the new pad won't go in there mm. because you've got the wrong carrier on there. I'm sorry, the wrong caliper on the carrier. So the shop thought that it was actually the one, the older ones that we had from last weekend, thought that they were the correct ones. Yeah, and they were six mil smaller. Yeah. Now, most people go, oh, it's, oh, 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 oh force them on, push them on. Do some grinding. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, some people would even try and clean the leading edge of the new caliper or reconditioned caliper and try and get it on there, you know. Um, it, there will be people out there who will do that and get those get those calipers on there because they think it's just, you know, the way you do it. Mm. Not realising that, you know. There's it, different models, yeah, different, it's, it's, uh, different so, but sizes. But if your pads are worn, that, luckily Herman's pads are new. 
Yeah, because we replaced so, them a few day, a few yeah, weekends ago. Yeah, that's how we knew the the, 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 the pistons were, were yeah. seizing in these. Yeah, that's we right. These up. That's right. And unfortunately, on Herman's chassis number, there was on the changeover year. Yeah. So as it's come down the production line, I'll put that one on, put that one. It was on the changeover yeah. year, and it wasn't the month. It was it was throughout the year they and, changed. And it. in fact, the these uh, uh, holes here, which is the mounting bolts. They're actually the same on the it's other exactly older one. The it's same. all exactly the same, except for that distance. There and there. Okay then, so these are the brake pads. And these are, we call it anti-squill shims. Brake shims, anti-squill shims. And they go on like that. And what they're designed to do is to take the friction out of the, um, out of the pad when it gets hot and stop it making a noise, you know? Um, a lot of people say it took the place of putting copper grease on them, you know? But, uh, being me, I always put a tiny little amount of copper grease on. Just a little bit, a really small amount, like that. Now, some people say, oh, you'll get dust caught between the squill shim and the pad. You're going to get dust anywhere, though, aren't you? You're going to get break dust anywhere, but I just put a little bit on like that, and a little bit on the edge, like that, and then a little bit, just a tiny bit, in there, where they see it. And you should be able to just push them in there nice and smooth, like that, with a shim on like that. And you see that shim's come, see that there? See where that's, that one's flat and that one isn't, see that? Yeah. And we just bend that over, like that. And then have a good look at it. Make sure it's in there, make sure it's touching the disc. And then what I do, is I'll put one finger on the, the pad, and just turn the disc, and look at the gap there. go all the way around and now I can feel on my finger now as I'm doing that if that pad's moving oh, okay so you're checking for if, whether or not the disc is actually warped yeah it would get warped or bent or or even got any snot or you know any detritus on it you know any you know because it's important to have a good it, it does and that mm. feels nice that feels okay and you do that on the inside as well. Yeah. And it's the inner one which actually has the brake sensor on it. In our caliper kit, we got these uh, dust covers, these rubber covers, and we're just about to replace those. On the caliper, on the carrier, you have these sliders sliding pins and have a rubber dust cover over them now they're quite good condition but what we'll do is that should just pull out like that yeah and it's got a, a grease on it yeah it's got a sort of a like a, a um a silicon grease can you see that yeah it's not copper grease it does look coppery yeah, it's silicon that is okay it's a silicon grease now or it should be what sh yeah it should be so what we'll do is we'll push that if you push that like that and hold that that slides that cover slides off you see that we'll clean that up and just check it very rare they wear but just check it for anywhere and these all good a little sachet of silicon grease come in the in the uh, kit, in the yeah, uh, caliper kit. In the caliper kit. You don't want too much on there. Just take your finger. Take your new cover. Push it over so it goes onto the, see there's a ring on the top there that, that locates on. A bevel on the end of the bolt. Yeah. The end of the, see it there? You see that? Yeah. And that just pushes over. And then locks in. Is there a so, is that, there a, so that doesn't that doesn't slide off when it's this and then you just literally back in again. A couple of pushes. There we go. Is there a, a wrong way round you could do that? Uh, not really, no. <laughs> Caliper bolts, retaining bolts going to the sliders, I'll hold the caliper onto the carrier. Um, sometimes you get new ones, sometimes you don't. If you, when you get the new ones, they've usually got a coating of blue uh, Loctite. 
on them. But if these are old ones, all I do is just put a little bit on. So when you do them up and you nip them up tight, they're, um, they lock in. Get your caliper, make sure the pistons are pushed right in. They should be pushed right in anyway. Put your sensor through. Pull that up tight. Slide that on. And get a bolt in. A bit of lock tight again on the bottom one. Let's get started. Same with the spanner. Hold on to the slider and then if you're just gonna replace the pads and not the calipers, if you loosen the top bolt and take the bottom bolt out, you should be able to swing the caliper up like that, change your pads, swing your caliper back down again. So you don't have to take the caliper off. Palm in your hand. Beauty! Beauty! <laughs> now we're going to be fitting the brake hoses. So hoses back on. If you look at the end of the hoses, just a little bit of fur in on there. Just literally a tiny piece of fine paper and just run it round once like that. Yeah, and that takes it all off. What are you using there? A bit of sandpaper? Just a tiny bit of 200. Right. Okay, wet and dry 200. Just to go around it, clean yeah. it off. I'm just thinking sandpaper in the... No, it's not sand, it's, it's wet I was going to say, it'll just come off, wouldn't it? Yeah, you don't want that going yeah, no, down. No, no, because no, once you've done that, you yeah. can trust your brake cleaner, give it a squirt and give it a wipe. Right. So a little bit of brake cleaner on it. Take your bang out with your done already. And be very careful when you put this in here, because it's brass versus alley thread. So be very, very careful when you do it. Make sure you get it. Get the thread lined up properly and don't force it. If it's not going, if it's not straight, it's not going, it's not going to go. There we go. Easy. We don't need to put the lock tight on those then. No, no, no. no. You don't over tighten these. Put them in and just two fingers. Nip them up. Next, we fitted the brake hose to the pipe, but first we had to remove our orange makeshift leak stopper. Just make sure you use decent gloves when doing this. You can see all the brake fluid running down Chaz's hands here. Once the pipe nut is in, you can jiggle the end of the hose to help tighten by hand. There we go. She's in. Nip it up nice and tight. The old brake smell. That's it. Beauty. Sometimes they supply new clips, sometimes they don't. And you usually supply the clips really when you buy new hoses. But these are in good nick. A little bit of copper grease on them. Not too much. Just so they'll slide in really. And they should go in and retain it. Right, so now we have done both sides and uh, we've bled the whole system. And so you can just see, I just want to show you what we've done. So there is the new caliper. Uh, we've got the, the, the pipes, the hoses in place now. We've got the clips plug, uh, put in as well. Uh, we've uh, even repaired the, uh, the, uh, the, the brake sensor here. And uh, yeah, it's looking really good. And then the other side, looking exactly the same nice and in fact i did this on my own this one um yeah so it's just uh, a matter of giving it a test drive look at that nice shiny uh caliper there now <laughs> i can't oh i can't move that but you can <laughs> what can't you do? oh there you go it's I moving it. moving the brake this. All right, yeah nice and 
What's the matter, Rad? Uh, well, you, you're, you're obviously just... stronger than me. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. So, okay, it's all padding. <laughs> so that is uh, going to be the end of this video. Uh, we just got to put the wheels on. We're going to do a bit of test drive, but I'm not going to record any of that. You've seen us do a t bit of a test drive in the, one of the previous videos. Uh, it's just a matter of going down a road and making sure the brakes work and you're happy with them. But uh, yeah, is there anything you want to add? Yeah, if you're not sure about doing this sort of thing yourself, um, get someone else to do it really. It's, uh, it's, it's not a difficult job. The hardest part is making sure you've got the right components and that you bleed it through properly. And um, you can always do it yourself run it down to your local MOT station or garage, anyone with a rolling road you can check the brake efficiency for you. Um, but these videos are just really to show you how easy it is really to, to, to do your own maintenance and um, you can tackle most things yourself. I mean brakes are a very dodgy area, you know, it's, it is something you should get done professionally if you're not confident in doing it yourself. But if you are, there's no reason why you can't and you can't do a good job, you know. You don't need ramps and specialist tools and stuff like that, you know, it's it's quite simple to do. There you go, bit of a good advice from old Chaz there. So thank Ooh, you very day. much. <laughs> <laughs> We've, um, <laughs> he says beauty all the time. I just managed to a few times catch him on the, on the, on the record. Figured I'm making some uh, t-shirts with beauty on there or Chaz says beauty or something like that, anyway. Hey. <laughs> um, thank you very much for watching uh, if you did like the video please give us a thumbs up if you didn't why not let us know why in the comment section below and if you've done it yourself done the brakes yourself or any other maintenance work on your motorhome why don't you let us know in the comment section below we'll be very interested to know what you've been up to until next time thank you very much and goodbye from me and goodbye from him <laughs> bye, bye bye Hello and welcome to Herman Hits the Road and in this video we're going to be replacing the front brake. <laughs> That's all we can do. But all I can say is thank God for Asda. <laughs> Send that bag back and get a replacement. <laughs> I will do, yeah. Oh, that has got brake fluid in it. It's bag for life, thank you. <laughs> for life. <laughs> 10p that was. <laughs> Tempe? Yeah, hello. Good God. What do I do? Just point at us. Just point at us now. Assume the stance. Herman hits the road. <laughs> Herman hits the road. Herman hits the Three, two, one. Herman, Herman hits, hits the, the road. road. No, do, do it once more. Three, two, one. Herman, Herman hits, hits the road. road. Brilliant. <laughs> that's cool, yeah, that's cool, yeah. No, I don't know if we'll be using that. <laughs> I'm used to dealing with short men and I chopped your top of your head off, you see, so I had to do it again. Thanks for watching our video. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed or leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe for more video updates or maybe even watch one of our previous videos. Bye bye now.